So in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at activity feeds and auto post configuration. Now, I know this isn't necessarily a new feature. This has actually been around for many, many versions, all the way dating back to 2011. But I get a lot of questions from people on, you know, how do you configure it? What are some of the options that you have available around working with custom entities? And what rules can you turn on and off? Because they just really haven't had an opportunity to play with it. So I thought this might be a nice opportunity just to kind of go back in and do a, a quick little overview view on what the feature is, how you can do some of the basic configurations, and then what you might need to do if you need to go in and do any customizations or work with custom entities on it. So let's go ahead and hop into the application and take a look. So when I'm talking about the activity feeds or the posts, I'm really talking about the social pane and, and putting information into the social pane. And if you haven't experienced the social pane, you'll see the social pane when you go into the application and you look at the areas um, in the middle, you'll see a posts, assistant activities, uh, notes, OneNote integration, if you've enabled OneNote integration. Remember, this is where if you were to turn on Yammer integration, this is where your auto posts would be replaced with the Yammer post information. So this is that, that post area that pops into the application. Obviously, there's going to be two types of posts. There's going to be auto-generated posts and user posts. The auto-generated posts are going to be based upon specific rules or activities that take place in the application for that particular item. Now, in this situation, if I wanted to configure this, what I would do is I would go into Settings, and activity feeds configuration. This is going to show me kind of all of my standard entities that have that are available for post configuration. So one of the key things that you'll see here is I don't necessarily have custom entities or anything like that that I would be able to turn this auto post functionality on for. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't ways that we can kind of facilitate some of that and I'll show you that here in a second. But this shows you all of the standard kind of out of the box entities and whether or not they have post functionality enabled. And you can see a lot of the big ones that come out of the box already do have that capabilities enabled from there. What you're going to do is you're going to select the entity that you want to work with. You're then going to hit activate. Now this is borderline a system customization. So one of the things that you'll see here is after I go ahead and activate this, it's still going to tell me that in order for this to be pushed out into the system, I'm going to need to publish my customizations. So even though this is technically a system configuration setting, I still will need to publish my customizations moving forward to make sure that this information pushes out and that auto posts are, are automatically being created. So here I'll go ahead and I'll hit OK. And then I would go ahead and, and go into uh, publishing these customizations. But before I do that, let's go ahead and well, I'll go ahead and publish my customizations here quick. And we'll just hit publish all customizations in the advent of time. And now that my customizations are published, now I'm going to go back into settings. And this time I'm going to go into activity feed rules. And so when I go into activity feed rules, this is going to show me all of the specific rule items that are used to trigger post generation automatically for this particular entity. So it looks at every item that has the information turned on for, and that allows me to basically go in and define those individual situations. So here where I did the phone call activity. Now I can see here some of the options that are available when a new phone call is created. I can go ahead and then select whatever specific options I want to have auto post created for. So I would go ahead and hit activate. So now that I've published those customizations, now I can go ahead and I can configure the actual rules piece. So underneath settings, if I go into activity feed rules, this is where I can see the specific rules that are available for each entity now that has activity feed post rules configured. So now I can see for the account, I can see what specific rules are available and it'll tell us basically when a new account is created, 
it's going to go ahead and create an auto post. And so if there's specific features or functionality that you want for a particular item, you can go ahead and activate or deactivate those as needed. Now, in this case, maybe for, you know, functionality, new case for an account, maybe I don't want that one particularly activated. I could just come in here, check whichever particular options I want, and then activate or deactivate based upon whatever specific situation that I want to do. Now, once I go ahead and deactivate that, same situation is going to apply as before. In order for anything to be activated or deactivated, it will need to be published as part of the application in order to move forward from there. So that's pretty straightforward. Now you've got everything in there that you want to work with, it will start capturing posts. What about situations where you want to start capturing posts maybe for custom entities, maybe you want to start capturing posts on you know, emails or other items that are coming in there. There is a way of using workflows that you could facilitate some of that. So for example, maybe you want to you know, flag a post for an account anytime a work order is created. Well, work order isn't necessarily an out of the box entity. It's a custom entity that's installed as part of the field service solution, but I still could surface that information as part of a post. So what I could do in here now is I could go into set settings, could go into processes, create a new process, and I'm just going to call this new post for work order. I'm going to make it a workflow, and I'll base it off of the work order entity. And then I'll go ahead and click on OK. Now in here, it's pretty simplistic. Um, at this point in time, I would define what action is going to constitute that post being created. So in this situation, it's going to be when a record is created, we'll do it at an organization level. Now, if I wanted to put some criteria in here to specify, you know, under what circumstances, and if this was true, you know, do it in this situation, I could, but we'll do something very basic. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a record and I'm going to create a new post. And then I'll set priorities. Now, in this situation, when I set priorities, uh, you know, what do I want to call this? So I'm going to say new work, or let's say work order. And I'll pull in the work order number. was created. This is going to be an auto post. Now, here's where things are a little bit different. So when I look at the regarding field, obviously, when I go in and click on the work order, I don't have an option here to just choose based upon the work order because the work order isn't necessarily enabled for posting functionality. So what I would have to do is I would want this to be regarding either, you know, the, the owner or in this case, the service account that this particular work order is going to be associated with. So I'm going to go ahead and click on service account add that into the uh, into this particular area, and then I can just define what this is. Well, this is just a status update as far as the item goes. So now I can go ahead and hit save and close, and I'll activate my workflow. And now if I were to go into field service, create a new work order, create a new process, and I'm just going to call this new post for work order. I'm going to make it a workflow, and I'll base it off of the work order entity. And then I'll go ahead and click on OK. 
Now in here, it's pretty simplistic. Um, at this point in time, I would define what action is going to constitute that post being created. So in this situation, it's going to be when a record is created. We'll do it at an organization level. Now, if I wanted to put some criteria in here to specify, you know, under what circumstances and if this was true, you know, do it in this situation, I could, but we'll do something very basic. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a record. And I'm going to create a new post. And then I'll set priorities. Now, in this situation, when I set priorities, uh, you know, what do I want to call this? So I'm going to say new work, or let's say work order. And I'll pull in the work order number. was created. This is going to be an auto post. Now, here's where things are a little bit different. So when I look at the regarding field, obviously when I go in and click on the work order, I don't have an option here to just choose based upon the work order because the work order isn't necessarily enabled for posting functionality. So what I would have to do is I would want this to be regarding either you know the, the owner or in this case, the service account that this particular work order is gonna be associated with. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on service account add that into the uh, into this particular area and then I can just define what this is well this is just a status update as far as the item goes so now I can go ahead and hit save and close and I'll activate my workflow and now if I were to go into field service create a new work order Pick the service account. Pick my primary incident type. Make it non-taxable. Save and close. And now if I were to go back into sales and accounts, I'll open up Alpine Ski House. And there it is. I can see that a new work order was created for this particular account. Uh, it shows me the work order information, and then I could go from there. So it does give you an option if you want to configure how some of these auto post information work for you know custom entities or even existing entities. Obviously, you can use the activity feeds to facilitate that, but you can also create work orders that, or workflows that would give you that option as well. So that's going to conclude our video on how to use the activity feeds. Again, not necessarily something that's brand new feature, um, but a nice little refresher and hopefully with some of the workflow things that we went through, gave you an idea on how you can utilize that moving forward. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.